All right, let's start the activity right away. So first we basically load the data which is already pre-stored in the files that we have been given, the identity labels that we have. They, so we just stored them as list and the list contains women, man, boys, he, she, father, sister, brother, and gender, queer, Hispanic, white, African, American, Latino. So this is not that this is like a very broad list and all these words might not occur in the data set, but you know, in the particular data set we will be looking at in this particular ex exercise. But again, I mean, if you are uh, ex planning to explore more data sets as an advanced analysis, so this list might be handy there as well. So next year, I also loaded my SNLI 1.0 train data set here in a Pandas data frame. And that's how the data set looked like. So a person on a horse jumps over a broken down airplane. Person is training his horse for a competition and the label is neutral. So many more data points here. And about, uh, that's like 550,000 rows. Now, uh, some minor thing that, that in this particular data set, there are a few data points that are duplicated. So we just deduplicating it and got rid of a few extra thousands. Uh, other than that, um, next we want to prepare the data for the analysis. So to be able to do better analysis, what uh, we do is that we do some kind of cleaning up, like we get rid of uh, stop words, we reduce, I mean, basically uh, uh, remove the stop words or lowercase all the characters. We do these small, small things. Let's go over each of them one by one. So here we basically, um, uh, we're writing a script to uh, be, uh, to which uh, uh, this is a function which basically give you a list of a uh, list of words which can be act as which are basically stop words. So we use stop words which are typically used in English from NLTK, and then we in addition we also uh, remove punctuations from the data. And this is the set of punctuations that we remove. And this is the remove stop word function. It basically takes a sentence split it into tokens. And for every token, it checks whether it has any word from the stop word list. If it does, you just get rid of that word. And also you remove the punctuations and other things that, that are there. Uh, after that, we also do lowercase the data point, data sentences that we have like these are all lowercase now yeah these are being just just done just to get you know better probability estimates since we have limited set of data set uh size of the data yeah i mean uh next we uh tokenize these sentences and we use nltk word tokenize to do the tokenization and that's how the sentence look like post tokenization a person uh, so look a person is outdoors on a horse so a person is outdoors comma on a horse dot so they've just split it and tokenized the sentence completely next i'll also get rid of the stop words so basically let's look at the sentence after i remove the stop word uh, the sentence here is maybe this one is uh, this one is interesting upper the same one right a person is outdoors on a horse right so a person is a stop word i got rid of it is a stop word on a they are all stop words so person outdoor horse and i also got rid of these dots and commas and other things that are there in the sentence so that's what we are left with so that's how we basically converted them into lowercase, tokenize them, remove these stop words. Now that's the form of data that we have from this to this. 
the next thing that we want to do is uh, again you know just check if we have some duplicates if we do get rid of them and next is uh, computing the PMI score for the PMI score I need probability but the bigram probabilities of the word and the unigram probabilities of the word so let's compute the unigram probabilities first so here what we are basically doing is that uh, we just combining all of the corpus that we'll be considering and then using counter to compute the uh, frequency of every word seen in the sentence every, every word seen in the corpus and here I'm also printing the top 20 most common unigrams which are seen with the uh, in the data set like man, women, dog, black, shirt, boy, girl. These are like the most common words used in the data set now after we've removed the stop words of course. Had we not done that a lot of a dot these things would have popped up with that, and they're not very interesting to look at. Hmm. Next is, uh, I also do some cleaning that we just dis, uh, discard the words which have frequency less than 15. And next, I need to compute the bigram probabilities. For bigram probability, there are two things that we can do. One is that when I'm looking at the bigram, I can treat, combine sentence one and sentence two and treat that as one sentence. And so you'll have basically total 549,000 uh, sentences or you can treat sentence one and sentence two independently so you will have double of these uh, number of sentences so for now I'll just treat the two independently and try to s and compute the bigram probabilities so here that's exactly what I'm doing and I compute the bigram probabilities here so once you have that computed, I also want to get rid of the bigram pairs which have less than 10 frequency because again, that's not very interesting. Mm. Now let's revisit to our PMI matrix again. Now I have bigram probabilities and I have unigram probabilities. Now I just need to write a function which can compute the PMI score for me. So the function takes in the takes in first word, second word and the unigram frequency and bigram frequency dictionary that we just created so here it has just computed the prob uh, it is just computed probability of word one where you have unigram frequency of word one in the numerator in denominator is total number of words unigrams that you've seen same you same way you can compute unigram uh, probability of word two and then this is the bigram probability of word one comma word two. You just have the frequency and you divide it by the number of bigrams that you've seen in the data set. That's it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's how we compute the PMI score. Once you have that, let me just print the identity labels just to revisit, you know, what all I have and what all analysis I can do. Uh, maybe, you know, let's look, let's try to do basic male, female comparison and see if there is any difference in the kind of words that are typically associated to each of them so yeah before that i'll just quickly this function basically what it does is it just you know takes all the identity labels and compute pmi scores of all the unigrams that you you've seen in the corpus uh, their pmi score with respect to the identity label that you have and uh, yeah that's it i mean that way you just compute the pmi score and we sorted the pmi scores yeah that's what i've done here so i'm using the functions here i gave it a list of identity labels kept on computing the pmi scores for all the words that occur in the corpus and next let's try to print the top most words uh, top 20 sorted on the basis of the PMI score like for women, buys, ordered, gossiping, bikinis, uh, man, it's refueling, own, steel, arguing, turban and yeah I mean for boys it's playing, for girls it's cheerleading so it's it, it seems it's like 
a whole lot of stereotype perpetuating like uh perpetuate i mean coming out from the data set that we've just looked at right uh, let's also try to do another experiment where we what we do is that we look at the difference in the words that occur in the male set and the female female set right so these are the words which occurs only in the female set like but not in the male set like bikinis blonde hair braids colorful cheering brushes these are costumes these are very unique to females only while for males it's like angry army backpack wrestle that's yeah that, those are the kind of words that you see which is clearly an indication of stereotype again i also wanted to look at some of the lgbt uh, 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 identity terms and what are the words which occur more frequently frequently with lgbt terms but are not seen with other genders like male or female so it's actually couple men pride and rights so i yeah, think the voices are coming out so beautifully yeah so that's the whole point of the exercise right that the minute you involve human beings to write or crowds to to do crowdsource annotations these biases can perpetuate you should always think about what changes i can do while writing the uh, instructions for my crowdsourcing worker while they're trying to write the data set and what other things that can be done to avoid such implicit bias to inadvertent inadvertently show up in the data set which is which will eventually be used to train models and evaluate models yeah thank you i hope you enjoyed the exercise